AWS Azure and GCP are three of the world's largest cloud service providers. But how are they different from each other? Let's find out. Hey guys, I'm Rahul and I'll be representing Amazon Web Services. I'm Chinmayi and I'll be representing Microsoft Azure. And I'm Shruti and I'll be representing Google Cloud Platform. So welcome to this video on AWS vs Azure vs GCP. Talking about market share, Amazon Web Services leads with around 32% of the worldwide public cloud share. Azure owns up to 16% of the worldwide market share. And GCP owns around 9% of the world's market share. Let's talk about each of these service providers in detail. AWS provides services that enable users to create and deploy applications over the cloud. These services are accessible via the internet. AWS, being the oldest of the lot, was launched in the year 2006. Azure, launched in 2010, is a computing platform that offers a wide range of services to build, manage and deploy applications on the network using tools and frameworks. Launched in the year 2008, GCP offers application development and integration services for its end users. In addition to cloud management, it also offers services for big data, machine learning and IoT. Now let's talk about availability zones. These are isolated locations within data center regions from which public cloud services originate and operate. Talking about AWS, they have 69 availability zones within 22 geographical regions. This includes regions in the United States, South America, Europe and Asia Pacific. They are also predicted to have 12 more additions in the future. Azure, available in 140 countries, has over 54 regions worldwide grouped into 6 geographies. These geographical locations have more than 100 data centers. GCP is available in 200 plus countries across the world. As of today, GCP is present in 61 zones and 20 regions with Osaka and Zurich being the newly added regions. Now let's talk about pricing. These services follow the pay-as-you-go approach. You pay only for the individual services you need for as long as you use them without requiring long-term contracts or complex licensing. Now on screen, you can see the pricing for each of these cloud service providers with respect to various instances like general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized and GPU. Now let's talk about the compute services offered. First off, we have virtual servers. For AWS, we have EC2. It is a web service which eliminates the need to invest in hardware so that you can develop and deploy applications in a faster manner. It provides virtual machines in which you can run your applications. Azure's virtual machines is one of the several types of computing resources that Azure offers. Azure gives the user the flexibility to deploy and manage a virtual environment inside a virtual network. GCP's VM service enables users to build, deploy and manage virtual machines to run workloads on the cloud. Now let's talk about the pricing of each of these services. AWS EC2 is free to try. It is packaged as part of AWS's free tier that lasts for 12 months and provides 750 hours per month of both Linux and Windows virtual machines. Azure Virtual Machine Service is a part of the free tier that offers this service for about 750 hours per month for a year. The user gets access to Windows and Linux virtual machines. GCP's VM service is a part of a free tier that includes micro instance per month for up to 12 months. Now, let's talk about Platform as a Service or PaaS services. For AWS, Elastic Beanstalk is an easy-to-use service for deploying and scaling web applications and services developed with Java, .NET, Node.js, Python and much more. It is used for maintaining capacity, provisioning, load balancing, auto-scaling and application health monitoring. The PaaS backbone utilizes virtualization techniques where the virtual machine is independent of the actual hardware that hosts it. Hence, the user can write application code without worrying about the underlying hardware. Google App Engine is a cloud computing platform as a service which is used by developers for hosting and building apps in Google data centers. The app engine requires the apps to be written in Java or Python and store data in Google Bigtable and use the Google query language for this. Next, let's talk about virtual private server services. AWS provides LightSail. It provides everything you need to build an application or a website along with the cost-effective monthly plan and minimum number of configurations. In simple words, VM image is a more comprehensive image for Microsoft Azure virtual machines. It helps the user create many identical virtual machines in a matter of minutes. Unfortunately, GCP does not offer any similar service. Next up, we have serverless computing services. AWS has Lambda. It is a serverless compute service that lets you run your code without facilitating and managing servers. You only pay for the compute time you use. 
It is used to execute backend code and scales automatically when required. Azure Functions is a serverless compute service that lets you run event-triggered code without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. This allows the users to build applications using serverless simple functions with the programming language of their choice. GCP Cloud Functions make it easy for developers to run and scale code in the cloud and build event-driven serverless applications. It is highly available and fault-tolerant. Now let's talk about storage services offered by each of these service providers. First off, we have object storage. AWS provides S3. It is an object storage that provides industry standard scalability, data availability, and performance. It is extremely durable and can be used for storing as well as recovering information or data from anywhere over the internet. Blob storage is an Azure feature that lets developers store unstructured data in Microsoft's cloud platform. Along with storage, it also offers scalability. It stores the data in the form of tiers depending on how often data is being accessed. Google Cloud Storage Storage is an online storage web service for storing and accessing data on Google Cloud Platform infrastructure. Unlike the Google Drive, Google Cloud Storage is more suitable for enterprises. It also stores objects that are organized into buckets. Amazon provides EBS or Elastic Block Store. It provides high-performance block storage and is used along with EC2 instances for workloads that are transaction or throughput intensive. Azure Managed Disk is a virtual hard disk. You can think of it like a physical disk in an on-premises server but virtualized. These managed disks allow the users to create up to 10,000 VM disks in a single subscription. Persistent Storage is a data storage device that retains data after power to the device is shut off. Google Persistent Disk is durable and high-performance block storage for GCP. Persistent Disk provides storage which can be attached to instances running in either Google Compute Engine or Kubernetes Engine. Next up, we have Disaster Recovery Services. AWS provides a cloud-based recovery service that ensures that your IT infrastructure and data are recovered while minimizing the amount of downtime that could be experienced. Site recovery helps ensure business continuity by keeping business apps and workloads running during outages. It allows recovery by orchestrating and automating the replication process of Azure virtual machines between regions. Unfortunately, GCP has no disaster recovery service. Next, let's talk about database services. First off, for AWS, we have RDS or Relational Database Service. It is a web service that's cost-effective and automates administration tasks. Basically, it simplifies the setup, operation, and scaling of a relational database. Microsoft Azure SQL Database is a software-as-a-service platform that includes built-in intelligence that learns app patterns and adapts to maximize performance, reliability, and data protection. It also eases the migration of SQL Server databases without changing the user's applications. Cloud SQL is a fully managed database service which is easy to set up, maintain, and administer relational PostgreSQL, MySQL, and SQL Server databases in the cloud. Hosted on GCP, Cloud SQL provides a database infrastructure for applications running anywhere. Next, we have NoSQL database services. AWS provides DynamoDB, which is a managed, durable database that provides security, backup and restore, and in-memory caching for applications. It is well known for its low latency and scalable performance. Azure Cosmos DB is Microsoft's globally distributed multi-model database service. It natively supports NoSQL. It natively supports NoSQL created for low latency and scalable applications. GCP Cloud Data Store is a NoSQL database service offered by Google on the GCP. It handles replication and scales automatically to your application's load. With Cloud Data Store's interface, data can easily be accessed by any deployment target. Now let's talk about the key cloud tools for each of these service providers. For AWS, in networking and content delivery, we have AWS Route 53 and AWS CloudFront. For management, we have AWS CloudWatch and AWS CloudFormation. For development, we have AWS CodeStart and AWS CodeBuild. For security, we have IAM and Key Management Service. For Microsoft Azure, networking and content delivery, we have Content Delivery Network and Express Route. For management tools, we have Azure Advisor and Network Watcher. For development tools, for management, we have Azure Advisor and Network Watcher. For development, we have Visual Studio ID and Azure Blob Studio. For security, we have Azure Security Center and Azure Active Directory. For GCP, we have the following tools. For networking and content delivery, we have Cloud CDN and Cloud DNS. For management, we have Stack Driver and GCP Monitoring. For development, we have Cloud Build and Cloud SDK. And finally, for security, we have Google Cloud IAM and Google 
and cloud security scanner. Now let's talk about the companies using these cloud providers. For AWS, we have Netflix, Unilever, Kellogg's, NASA, Nokia, and Adobe. Pixar, Samsung, eBay, Fujitsu, EMC, and BMW, among others, use Microsoft Azure. So as seen on your screens, the companies that use GCP are Spotify, HSBC, Snapchat, Twitter, PayPal, and 20th Century Fox. Let's talk about the advantages of each of these services. Amazon provides enterprise-friendly services. You can leverage Amazon's 15 years of experience delivering large-scale global infrastructure. And it still continues to hone and innovate its infrastructure management skills and capabilities. Secondly, it provides instant access to resources. AWS is designed to allow application providers, ISVs and vendors to quickly and securely host your applications, whether an existing application or a new SaaS-based application. Speed and Agility AWS provides you access to its services within minutes. All you need to select is what you require and you can proceed. You can access each of these applications anytime you need them. And finally, it's secure and reliable. Amazon enables you to innovate and scale your application in a secure environment. It secures and hardens your infrastructure. More importantly, it provides security at a cheaper cost than on-premise environments. Now talking about some of the advantages of Azure. Microsoft Azure offers better development operations. It also provides strong security profile. Azure has a strong focus on security, following the standard security model of detect, assess, diagnose, stabilize, and close. Azure also provides a cost-effective solution. The cloud environment allows businesses to launch both customer applications and internal apps in the cloud, which saves on IT infrastructure costs. Hence, it's OPEX friendly. Let's now look at the advantages of GCP. Google bills in minute level increments, so you only pay for the compute time you use. They also provide discounted prices for long running workloads. For example, you use the VM for a month and get a discount. GCP also provides live migration of virtual machines. Live migration is the process of moving a running VM from one physical server to another without disrupting its availability to the users. This is a very important differentiator for Google Cloud compared to other cloud providers. GCP provides automatic scalability. This allows a site's container scale to as many CPUs as needed. Google Cloud Storage is designed for 99.9% .9 durability. It creates server backup and stores them in a user-configured location. Let's talk about the disadvantages of each of these services. For AWS, there's a limitation of the EC2 service. AWS provides limitations on resources that vary from region to region. There may be a limit to the number of instances that can be created. However, you can request for these limits to be increased. Secondly, they have a technical support fee. AWS charges you for immediate support and you can opt for any of these packages. Developer which costs $29 per month, business which costs more than $100, and enterprise that costs more than $15,000. It has certain network connectivity issues. It also has general issues when you move to the cloud like downtime, limited control, backup protection, and so on. However, most of these are temporary issues and can be handled over time. Talking about some of the disadvantages of Microsoft Azure. Codebase is different when working offline and it requires modification when working on the cloud. Pass ecosystem is not as efficient as IaaS. Azure Management Console is frustrating to work with. It is slow to respond and update and requires far too many clicks to achieve simple tasks. Azure Backup is intended for backing up and restoring data located on your on-premises servers to the cloud. That's a great feature, but it's not really useful for doing bare metal restores of servers in a remote data center. Let's now look into the disadvantages of GCP. So when it comes to cloud providers, the support fee is very minimal. But in the case of GCP, it is quite costly. It is around $150 per month for the most basic service. Similar to AWS S3, GCP has a complex pricing schema. Also, it is not very budget friendly when it comes to downloading data from Google Cloud Storage. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.